Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a fairly unknown and underrepresented c -sharp feature called Object Deconstruction that I think is really really cool. Now, as a feature, it is natively supported by many of the types in .NET already, but you can actually supercharge your own types by introducing it and making the developer experience hopefully better. So in this video I'm going to explain what it is, how it works, where you get it natively, and trust me there's a couple of places you might not expect it, and way way more. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so what is Object Deconstruction? Well, let's go in this console application and basically show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a key value pair object, just a simple object. So I'm going to say key value pair in case you don't know what that is. It is, well, as the name implies, uh, a key value pair. The key is the string in this case, the value is the integer. So if I wanted to initialize this with just one item, I could have said, for example, Nick over here and then just some number over here. Uh, and I can then go ahead and use that and I can get the key and I can get the value. Now that is cool, but I can also do the following. I don't have to use it as a key value pair. I can also use a tuple and say key and value. And then I have these two individual parameters, as you can see, the string over here and the number over here, the value individually. Now, of course, if I don't need any of those, I can just discard them by using the discard operator. Just a single underscore will basically remove it from the equation. So you can't really use it, but you can still use the key itself. This is very useful, especially when you're iterating key value pairs through a list or also, for example, if you have a, a dictionary, let's say new dictionary over here again, string and number. If you're iterating that, you might have noticed that you can do the following. You can say uh, for each, for example, and those values are key value pairs. So you can say key and value. I'm going to quickly comment this out. Uh, and this, in my opinion, is better than getting the individual entry of the dictionary because it just gives you direct access to those items. So how is that done? Well, this is done through a process called object deconstruction. Now, if we go all the way back to this first example with the key value pair, you might have seen that as I'm clicking key value pair and I say dot, there's a method here called deconstruct. So I'm not going to show you exactly what's in there yet, but as you can tell by here, this deconstruction feature is enabled through a method. Now that means that I can create that method for any type. For example, I can go here and say class point 2D. So that is a point in 2D space, and I'm going to represent that uh, with integers. So I'm going to say uh, int x and int y. This is just a value or a point in 2D space. So value x and value y gives us the point. Now I could do the following. I could say point over here equals new point and then give it again a couple of values. So one and two. If I do that, then I can go ahead and get each individual type by saying dot x and dot y. But I can also go in that class and I can say public void deconstruct and yes the name matters it has to be called deconstruct this is done through duck typing effectively and then i want to have the parameters i want to make deconstructable or this type deconstructable into as out parameters so out int x and out int y and if i do that then i can go ahead and set those out parameters to any value i want in this case it's going to be the property values of x and y but you can also do calculations if you want you can do whatever you want in here by doing that now i can go to point and i can say x and y and immediately deconstruct that type using this method now here's something very very interesting imagine that this is not a class but it is actually a record. So I say record point 2D, and then I have int X and int Y. The interesting thing about that, and I have to change this a bit, so I'm gonna say again, a couple of random numbers. As you can see, I didn't change anything. I didn't add a deconstructor myself, but what's happening is that because this is a record, records automatically, if we go over here into the IL viewer, and move myself out of the way and quickly, uh, build this project, you will see that a record, because the record is basically compiled into low-level C-sharp from high-level C-sharp, if I say low-level C-sharp, 
you will find this deconstruct, where is it? It should be all the way down. This deconstruct compiler generated deconstructor that allows this to happen. So records get that for their properties by default. Classes don't, you can add it yourself. Now, this is really, really cool, but it actually gets cooler because what if there's a type that you don't own? For example, let's go ahead and assume that I want to add a deconstructor to something like an exception. Let's say I have the exception class here. I can say new exception, and then I can have like a stack trace and a message and whatever. Uh, but for some reason, and I'm not saying this is a good practice, don't do that. I just want an example of a type we don't really own directly. I can go here and I can say, I want this to be the message of the exception. And I want this to be the stack trace of the exception. How do I do this? Is it even possible? And the answer is yes, you can actually do this. What you have to do is create a new class and I'm going to say exception extensions over here. And I'm going to change that to a static class because I'm going to have an extension method in here. An extension method requires a static class. So I'm going to go here and say public static void deconstruct. The name is super important. And then I'm going to say this exception exception so this is an extension of the exception class and then i'm going to say out string message and out string which is nullable stack trace because the stack trace is nullable and then i can take that message and i can say message equals exception dot message and then stack trace equals exception dot stack trace and by doing that what what happens here i can import that extension method through using that namespace and now my message is here and my stack trace is here and I can access them directly without having to use the full object. Now, of course, with this feature, you have to be careful. For example, this is not a great idea because it's not very really obvious what you're deconstructing into. But whenever something is obvious and it makes sense in the context of what you're doing, I highly recommend you consider a deconstruction. It can make your life way easier like it does it with this key value native deconstruction that in this case, it uh, looks like this. Let's see if we can actually step into that. Here you go. It is a key and a value simple deconstructor. And you should know that tons of C sharp native types actually support this BCL types. For example, if you say date time over here, we have a new date time. Well, date time has multiple deconstructors, which by the way, you can have. For example, I can say that this is date and time, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, this deconstructs into date only and time only, so you can break it down to many uh, different types. Or I think you can say year, month, and day, if I'm not wrong. So int, 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 if we go in here, as you're going to see, is year, month, and day. So you have a couple of options on things that do make sense. I don't think you can deconstruct any further uh, to have hour, minutes, and seconds, but let's try it. Nope, it is not possible, but this is something you can actually add a deconstructor yourself if you really want to. I think this is a bit too much. I don't like that you have so many types that it's getting so long, so I personally don't recommend it, but two or three, it does really make sense. But now I wanna know from you, what do you think about this feature? And please leave a comment down below, letting me know what native BCL types you think that can have a deconstructor and what should that deconstruct into? For example, daytime here, yeah, that makes sense. Key value pair here, yeah, that makes sense. But what would you add if you could change the BCL? Maybe the .NET team sees that video and they add in .NET 9. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.